Alrighty, good morning everybody and welcome to our Friday How to Take Over the World session. We're going to do a little bit differently this week because we have had a very busy week. We have been on our feet for all of yesterday and there are some very tired arms, legs and brains for today. So I'm not going to bore you with some PowerPoint and this is also me just getting out of actually having done the PowerPoint in the first place. Um, but I'm going to just to talk a little bit about LeaderX and I think it, there are a couple of things to take out of it. So um kg was uh, the one who missed out yesterday but this was just a kind of some images of the standard we had yesterday we'll share some more on social media etc um but it was quite cool to be there there was some good uh, interactions i was chatting to ed earlier and he was saying that they've got some nice leads to follow up on um so all in all it was well done to everybody who put it together it's you know these things are always um, a bit of an experiment, but I think we came away with it quite nicely. I'm just going to share one slide on around this, and I just want you to give it some thought. So what next? So we had actually had a really good session last night. It was actually better than I thought it was going to be, um, but it was talking about just burning out and um, kind of the, you know, the kind of mental health situation that we have in South Africa at the moment. So um, for those who don't know, they estimate it's about 200 billion rands worth of um, uh, their, their mental health issues across South Africa every year. And that's everything from depression, suicide, <coughs> um, just general health issues. And what was quite interesting was we had three very established professionals. Two of them are run their own businesses. One who's a very senior person inside of um, Outvest. And every one of them basically highlighted the fact that there is a massive crisis that they're all burnt out um and you know i think it was probably one of the most powerful sessions i've watched in a long time and i think one of the things i just want to emphasize to you guys is obviously you know it's it's nice when you're young and you're full of energy etc but there is a lot going on in the world and i think it is just important that you also need to give yourselves a chance to recuperate and recover and I mean like no job is ever going to be worth your kind of mental health sanity etc um so first thing for today just make sure you give yourselves a little bit of rest you can recharge um and that will be something to give some thought to second thing and this is kind of probably more to Jess's wheelhouse um, but, you know, we, we sat there alongside a number of brands, most of them have got, uh, I think only Go-Getter, who were the ones down the road, you know, three or four down from us, um, most of them are all far more established, much bigger budgets, etc. And we were working, you know, the, the fact that our brand was there um, should serve as a almost like a baseline that we then drag ourselves up to the next level. So it means, you know, we take, you know, I was looking at the branding that Jess had put up for the um, workshop and I thought, you know, this is cool. You can walk in from uh, 50 meters away and see our branding. Um, and I think that it's just important that we just reset our base level brand and we become protective of it. And, you know, how does it get used? What's the context of it? What are the rules around it? So, you know, I think it's cool that you, you, you see yourself alongside the JSC, alongside Easy Equities, um, Sassfin, uh, all those other big brands. And we need to kind of as a mentally, you know, you know, inside of our own team, I think we do need to reset our base level brand and use this as the way going forward. Third thing was refining our value proposition. So I think one or two, one, <coughs> excuse me, um, you know, and this is something we've all grappled with over the last uh, 12 months, and it was something we discussed at the kind of end of year strategy thing is, you know, how exactly do we communicate what it is we do and our value proposition. And I know it's, you know, we are a bit of a mix and mash of, of different things and I've given, you know, just talking about it yesterday and introducing ourselves and that kind of thing, it's given me some thought. Um, but for all of you to just kind of refine our value proposition as well, how do we present to, to people when we start talk, talking to them? Uh, fourth thing, connecting with people you found interesting. I know it's cheesy, but, you know, your network is your net worth. Um, so if you meet interesting people, connect with them. It doesn't have to be somebody directly involved with the um, uh, with the uh, with your direct field of interest, but it could be somebody in general. Um, but please don't connect with that guy who was the health coach. 
um, because he was very exhausting and he won't stop talking to you. Um, so give him a skip. Um, share what you found interesting. Um, you guys were, you know, there were a variety, everything from crypto through to property, through to political economy, through to entrepreneurship. Um, share what you found interesting and use your professional networks to go and, um, you know, build new contacts. And then last, <coughs> oh gosh, uh, lastly, follow up with your um, contacts as well. I think that this is one of the things that, um, you know, it's really important to refresh in the minds of people. Uh, we've got some interesting leads there. The trick is going to be now to follow up and see what we can work on and grow with them. So those are my very simple tips out of it. And now, did I miss anything you think is relevant? I don't. I think yesterday was a really cool day and it was so, so, so much fun to be out and about with the team establishing who we are. Yeah, I agree. Cool. With that, I'm going to hand over for the presentation. And now you're going first. I'll go nope, first. Jess is going first. Jess is going first. Okay, Jess, over to you. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah, you're good. Awesome. Good morning, everyone, and happy, happy Friday. My name is Jess Rousseau, and I'm the in-house designer for Decusatio. So because it's Friday and we can finally start to ease into the weekend, today's topic is going to be a little different from the things I've previously um, presented on. So today, today, I'll be speaking about smiling. So who doesn't love it? Who, didn't, who doesn't love to see it? There's just something so refreshing about seeing someone smile and that, um, and that they're feeling so happy in that moment. So stats actually show that the average happy adult smiles 40 to 50 times daily, while the typical adult only smiles 20 times per day. And let's not kid ourselves, 15 times um, a day are probably, 15 times are probably a fake smile. Um, when they are making small talk with someone they'd rather not be in a conversation with. Um, I know I've been there. Nowadays, we are so hyper-focused on all the negativity that exists in the world. The news is completely covered with bad news, and we hardly get to celebrate the good things and smile when, when we hear good news. There are, many, there are many things that make me smile, and, they, and these include seeing my cats play together, watching some funny TikToks, um, after a long day and seeing my friends for a midweek co coffee catch up. Those of you that want, please could you put in the comments and the things that make you smile that I'd love to know. Smiling can change the, it can change anyone's entire vibe. It can paint you in a completely different light and it can actually portray you as a completely different person. Aside from the fact that smiling just makes humans more beautiful, these are actually, they are actually benefits that are um, backed by science that come with smiling. These include reduced blood um, pressure, reduced stress, a strengthened immune system, and increased endurance. And to think these healthy benefits can occur just from smiling, something, something we um, some, sometimes some subconsciously do. People who smile are also known to earn more money and be more productive at work. And who, want, who wouldn't want that skill in their, back, in their back pocket? Yesterday, the Decusatio team attended Leader X and hosted a talk titled Health is Wealth. And we spoke about how your health is so incredibly vital in order to maintain success. Many people nowadays are so hyper-focused on, on success that they stress themselves out the point out to the point of literal sickness and depression. These benefits that can occur can help combat, combat this. All you have to do is crack a smile. And if you do it long enough, you might even start laughing and don't even get me started on the benefits of laughing. Smiling is truly contagious. So not only will you look gorgeous with that set of pearly whites, but you will influence others to do the same. Create a wholesome vibe no matter where you are and positively contribute to your health and mental wellness. 
So despite the fact that smiling 40 to 50 times daily can, ma can make you seem a bit like a, a nutcase, you are truly fully, never fully dressed without a smile. So don't forget to add to your list of things to do this morning. Happy Friday. Very good, Jess. I'm very impressed. And the animations are good as well. No, I mean, I think it's it's so true. I think that we, we, we have so much negativity in the world around us at the moment. And it, it actually feeds into, you know, the, the general relationships. People don't, you know, when, when, whether it's work, whether it's social, whether it's family, whatever it is, if you're not out there and you, you don't actually put a bit of a smile on your face, like there's a... Um, it, it does actually come out, and I think it 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 infects everybody around you. So um, either positively or negatively. So cool, cool, Prezo. Anybody else got any comments? I think that also speaks to exactly what we've been doing this week. Like if you've had a smile on your face and you just like you made eye contact, smiled at someone, like it was so much easier for them to engage with you. Um, and then it it also led. That to them actually approaching you and you're not necessarily having to go and approach five million people um yeah so that's also really cool thanks for the reminder jace yeah and I, I mean just sorry just building on it was actually something that i wanted to mention yesterday but i mean i think Anae is an absolute machine at going out and engaging people who were walking past and uh, you know i think that we could all learn from her in terms of drawing people in to have discussions about what we do. Um, but I think the fact that she, you know, whether she was engaged in the Easy Equities team or people walking past, um, she was great at that. And I think we can all learn from her. And now over to you for your prezzo. Thanks so much, Mark. I really appreciate that. So as you guys can see, I definitely took the lazy approach this morning. Um, I assume that you can see my screen uh, with the farmer and the yeah. two buckets right now. That stuff. Um, so last weekend, I came across this story on Instagram, and I think it actually fits so well with what Jess was presenting on this morning. Um, and what is so cool about it is that Emma shared it with me this week, saying she's come across this and she thought I might find it interesting. And I was like, no way, you won't believe it. I actually read this story out loud to some people over the weekend. So I thought that I wanted to share that with you because this fits well, fits in so well with what Jess was presenting on this morning, and I'll tell you why afterwards. So there once was a farmer who had two buckets. He used those buckets to bring home, to bring water home every day. One of the buckets had a crack and leaked continuously. The other was perfect and never spilled a drop. As time passed, the cracked bucket became sad about the leaked water. He decided to speak with the farmer. Upon learning that he was sad, the farmer asked the bucket to join him on a walk. They walked down the same path as always, but this time the farmer pointed out all of the wonderful life that had sprung up around them. He explained to the bucket that he was responsible for all of this beauty. If he hadn't leaked water every day, the plants would never have grown. The bucket realized that despite his flaws, he still helped those around him grow, even when he wasn't aware of it. So um, I think this fits in so well with what Jess was presenting on this morning. Often we kind of like we we are blinded by the cracks in our life that we forget to that we while we while we are cracked, we are still like spreading love and joy and um, enabling and inspiring growth around us. So. Oh, that's just my little like motivational story for this morning to not let your cracks blind you but to always be aware of the growth and the life and the love that you are still inspiring around you so thanks guys yeah 100 percent. and i mean i i think again just building on both of the presentations and kind of just life in general like we do it, it's so much it's easy to find the negative in everything um and i think that the we, we don't always realize and i think we always uh, you know personally i i, I want to build a business i want to be successful and all these things and sometimes the world is just difficult around um and but you know seeing you guys growing and kind of 
brand is growing and little steps in like sometimes you don't see the little steps because you're so focused on kind of big ones so cool story thank you Anna. anybody else got any comments i think often we also try to be the perfect bucket um instead of just like focusing on your unique value proposition so that was also something that was really cool that stood out for me from the story um if you if you were the perfect bucket, you were not. You wouldn't necessarily have watered the flowers. So, like tap into what you bring to the market and to the table. Yeah, I agree one hundred percent. Cool. It has been a good session. Um, I think everyone has um, come to the party again. It's been um, really appreciated. Everything that's gone out there. If you guys did get inquiries from yesterday and you want some help with them, please bomb me a line. Happy to do it. We will do follow ups to everybody um but yeah it, it has been a good week and i'm proud of everybody and i think it's cool and i think we took another big step forward today so uh thank you everybody and happy friday and we shall chat then during the day happy friday everybody bye happy friday, guys. bye